Jump on. <laughs> Look at somebody say, an ear to hear. An ear to hear. 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 AdamandBeliever.com forward slash an ear to hear. This is not going to take me long, but you need to hear this. God gives us preachers of the gospel that stand before us and proclaim the way of God and teach his word. Amen. Amen. Y'all believe God gave you that here? All right, I believe it. Amen. He speaks through his preachers, and if we cannot hear them, then we cannot hear. If you can't hear preachers, you can't hear. Romans 10 and 14, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? This is the part. And how shall they hear without a what? A preacher. A preacher. Now, you admonishing somebody, encouraging somebody, or you witnessing to somebody, that don't make you a preacher. That's your reasonable service. You want to share what is happening. That's what you're supposed to do with anything. You get that new car, you want to share a ride with somebody. Your friend get a new car, you want to ride shotgun. Yeah, you want to share it. So that's just what you do because you're happy about what you have. You're happy about what God has done. Amen? But there are those that are called to preach the word. And when preachers see the word, they see it differently than those that aren't called. That's what makes them the preacher. Amen. Amen. You see it, it blesses you. You have application, all of those things. But when a preacher preaches it, he can rightly divide it and open it up. Another level of understanding. There are layers to the Bible. That's what makes it alive. Amen. The New Testament preachers proclaim an unwritten word They proclaimed an unwritten word and the people had to trust him. So they had the Torah, the five books of Moses and the the law. But then the application of the law, especially to the Gentiles, how they had to extrapolate that. There was no written text. What they were preaching or saying was becoming the written New Testament. But people had to trust them. So it had to be 100% Holy Ghost. It couldn't happen in 2023 that way because of all that we have that is against the Holy Ghost. But back then, all of this stuff didn't exist. Wasn't no social media, somebody popping up telling you a lie every time you go through a feed. The work, it was a different level. The gospel was so powerful then, great men were afraid of it. The Bible said Herod was afraid to touch John the Baptist. He had to be tricked into doing it. You afraid of a wild man in the wilderness and you are the king? There was a different level of understanding and respect that people had for the word and those that carried the word. So but back then, these guys would preach it. And people would have to trust it. Now we have the written word. But we should still trust the words of God's God's preachers. Amen. 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 When his words are based in the word, you should trust it. Oh, I don't trust no man. Well, you're going to be lonely. And in your head all the time. You don't trust. If you say you don't trust no man, that means you don't even trust yourself. You don't have nobody to talk to. This isn't to say that we should not read the word for ourselves or reference the preacher's words. But we should learn from those that God has set before us. Amen. 
Ephesians 4 and 11, he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the what? This is what God gave. Amen. And they all function together. Can I keep preaching? All right. It's a powerful saying. If you are too big to be led, then you are too small to lead. You can't lead if you can't. Uh, you can't lead if you can't be led. Right. Right. Yeah, and the saddest part that people don't take into consideration: when you don't like to be led, your children aren't going to follow you. All yeah. right. oh, the hand claps stand out on that. Yeah. Yeah, if your kids see you always arguing with leadership, falling out with leadership, you can't be under nobody, they're not going to be under you. As soon as they get old enough, they're getting away from you. They're getting away from you. As soon as they're old enough. Yeah, they see you jawing at the pastor, arguing with the pastor all the time, arguing with the elders at the church, all of that. They see you always coming home. Yeah, she's... Brother so and so, it's so so all that. Soon as they come of age, they leave in that church. Because every night they're wondering why you still there. Oh, it's getting quiet in here. Yes, what, uh, they're kids. They don't understand. Well, no, I didn't really mean when I said that. They are right. That's why I went. No, you went off. Pastor, he a pro false prophet and ain't coming to here every Sunday. Will you get your schizophrenic, spiritually schizophrenic tail out of here? Why, why are you in here? Yeah, but you do that in front of them and you get over it. They don't. It's ingrained in them. It's a part of their development. Can I keep preaching in the house? Yeah. Amen. I'm going to do it. Yes, sir. There are several things that block our hearing and cause us to make bad decisions that we end up regretting for a long time. When we make decisions based on misinformation, bad teaching, or bad counsel, then we end up making our way harder. When your hearing is blocked and you can't hear. Why would you come in here Sunday after Sunday and not listen? And the thing about spiritual wax <laughs> in your ear, <laughs> it's, it's a buildup. Your ear, you, you, it's, it's slow. You start slowly, gradually losing your hearing, your spiritual hearing. And over time, you stop seeing what what that, what that is being preached, you stop applying it to yourself. You can't even hear it for yourself anymore. Your ears are so blocked, everything the preacher preaches is for someone else. And for you to yell amen. So you amen in everything I say. You the loudest one. That's right, preacher. Preach it, preacher. You start saying that after I say it. Then you start saying it while I'm saying it. That's a demon. Security. <laughs> but you you can't hear it. Pastor the priest this morning. Woo boy. He went in. He went in on everybody. Did, did, did he go in on you? Oh uh, no. But everybody else got it. What's wrong with you? That's so jive. Why would you see? It's for you too. Yeah. Amen. I'm not going to I'm not going to a church. I'm gonna give it two, three weeks. If I ain't said ouch by now, then this is not where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. Amen. Pastor's message needs to be sitting on my pew every now and then. Yeah. I mean in the shape form of a person, just a word sitting right on <laughs> it needs to be on my rope. That's how I know that the Spirit of the Lord wants me there. Amen. 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 But 
That might be happening, but if you can't hear, you can't hear. Amen. John 8 and 43 says, why are my words not clear to you? Is it because your ears are shut to my teaching? Are your ears shut to my teaching? Do I sound like a high school teacher that gave you a bad grade and you ain't got over it? Or is it just male authority, period? Because you've been hurt by men so much. Man, I'm telling you the truth. I love you. and I'm giving you the truth. Why do you hate me? I remember I was speaking at in, in, in uh, Norfolk, Hampton University. And I'm going out, big old crowd, just huge crowd. And dude said, hey man, there's a sniper in the audience and he's going to kill you. I said, who is he? He's from the Temple of Hip Hop. And they said that they're taking you out at this event. So Elder, in my mind, I start trying to figure out why, how do you get that ain't but well, first, I don't know you. And what did I, how? He said the five percenters and, uh, in the temple of hip hop, they got together and they're going to take you out. And I, I'll never forget this. I think I've told y'all about this before. I remember what I was wearing. I remember everything because, you know, I thought that was it. Get your hand out my pocket. That's all I was listening for the whole time I was preaching. I mean, I was up there just waiting for somebody to throw a smoking tile down. I was waiting on it. I just, but I told the Lord, I said, God, if I'm not willing to die for this, I don't want to do it. You got the wrong person. And I walked out there and preached, and I mean, everything looked like a gun. Somebody messing with their earrings. Oh, Lord, that, what is that? Somebody go get him. <laughs> and the scariest part of that evening was I was preaching, and then after I finished, I did altar call, and I said, and also, if anybody got, you know, music that they need to turn in, or this and that, different paraphernalia, whatever, demonic stuff, I said, we're going to bring all that, too. And everybody just got up and started rush, running. So I'm thinking, this is it, Lord. <laughs> Let's do the Malcolm X. <laughs> Boom! I just thought that was it. But they were running to their dorms. They came, and I think they took up, if I can remember correctly, it was 57 trash bags full of just stuff that t t uh, the college students had that they didn't want anymore. Demonic music, demonic thing, things that they just threw it off, went to their dorms and came and brought it back. That was a powerful move of God. And that's when God spoke to me and said, They're not, they, they don't hate you, they hate me. It's the truth they hate. Because the truth stops people from doing what's convenient. Yeah. Stops that money. Man, when you mess with the money. Amen. But he says, I mean, can you not hear me? And people for money create ways to stop you from hearing. The Bible said, the love of money is what? The root of all evil. So if they pay you enough money, people will create ways to block your hearing. So you can't hear what thus saith the Lord. Yeah. Some of y'all, when you first joined this church, you only watch TV every now and then. Now you watch every show that comes out. What happened over time? Wax build up. Yeah. You listen to praise and worship. You listen to gospel music. Now what you listen to? Booty shaking. Yeah. Yeah. You listen to alien, because all that's alien music. You can't understand what they say. It's alien jump. You listening to creatures. Bunch of creatures done went in the studio. Yeah. And, but you used to wouldn't touch that. 
Because you knew the evils behind it. Yeah, all your clothes used to fit when you first came to this church. They used to fit. All of them. Even baggy. Now, they're your kids' clothes. Pastor, they the same clothes that I started. Yeah, but you've changed. They don't work no more. That's why we have the swap. I know I'm preaching in here. Somebody don't like this. Things change. So listen to what I'm saying. You used to could hear. You used to be sensitive. Now your hearing is blocked. And the word you're hearing every week is no longer able to penetrate. You wasting both of our times and God's time if you're not going to hear. Can I keep preaching? Hearing impairment. He can keep yelling all he wants. But bruh can't hear him. Amen. And this is how I feel sometimes. That's why I chose this picture. I feel like this sometimes. Can you hear me? Can you hear a word that could save your life? The first thing that impairs our hearing is pride. The biggest thing, the element of pride, especially when coupled with religiosity, will stop a person from hearing. Religious people, it's very religious people, it's hard for them to hear because they're very religious. What are you going to tell me that I'm not already good at? When a person is prideful, they do not want to submit or humble themselves for fear of what people will think of them. They always fight for spiritual equality, oh Lord, and cannot submit to those that God brings to help them. Spirit, why do you want spiritual equality? Hey brother, you know, I'm noticing some things you don't do. Ah, I saw it. Well, you know, I just want to help you in this. It's, I'm good. How about you? You good? Leave. You can't pastor nobody like that. You're looking for spiritual equality because for some reason what I know makes you feel inferior. You know, that's the curse of Canaan. Inferiority. That's what Noah told his sons. You're going to be inferior to these others. Your seed is going to be inferior to your brothers. So an inferiority complex makes people strive to be better than. So you can't be under any leadership. Man, the pandemic and the COVID blessed them. You shut the church down. Now nobody, now I don't have to fool with nobody. And I can be my own authority. Can I keep going? Yes, they use religion for a show. And they use God to boost their own ego. Once they gain a reputation, prominence, or high positions in churches or ministries, they must keep up appearances and block out the truth that interferes with their progression. So once you didn't built yourself up to a certain place, now certain truths you can't listen to because they're going to interfere with your progression. Yeah. Huh. Oh, yeah, I've talked to them. Talk to them, brother. I have. They call me. Uh, yeah, so Cardi B wants me to do something with her and I know how you feel. How I feel? How does God feel? How does God feel about what? And her practicing Santeria magic in her lyrics, in her videos, had sex with a dead corpse in a video. 
Necrophilia. How does God feel about that? You worried about what I think? What I think. Brother, I'm telling you what God said. Have no fellowship. A fellowship is a work. When you join with somebody to do entertainment, it's a work. That's fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. I know how you feel. Shut up. I just... It's, uh, you don't want me to get in the way of your progression. Yeah. Right. That's big to you. To me, you worse than a drug dealer. Drug dealer got the same argument. I'm just trying to provide for my family. What about the people you destroy? This is dangerous because the truth they need that could help their children. Is anybody thinking about their children? What you gonna tell your child and you done recorded with Nicki Minaj or what's the other one, Cardi B? What you gonna tell your child, not to listen to her? Well, just listen to the song that I'm on. What the parents do in moderation, the children are going to do excessively. This is dangerous because the truth they need that could help their children is shunned for their own selfish agendas. The Bible said pride, everybody talks about pride leading to destruction and a fall, but this is a, this one right here. Pride leads to disgrace. 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 How are you going to stand before God? You're going to be disgraced. But with humility comes what? You better call and ask somebody. Posture. This one. Blocks your hearing. When people are hurt by ministries or leaders, they carry grudges, unforgiveness, and pain. These burdens usually equate to a bad attitude toward leadership and distrust in God's preachers. So what do they do? They decide to go on a quest to find Jesus without fellowship or authority. Next time you see them, half their hair is an afro and the other half is braided. <laughs> Bruh, what happened to you? He got an onk, a cross, and a donkey hanging from his neck. What does that mean? How you doing, brother? Oh, man, my moons, they all aligned. You yeah, have moons? They done went crazy. They done went crazy because they're trying to get so far away from the hurt, but the hurt is attached to the truth. So what? What do I do? Downtown. You think it's hot in here? Just imagine if you was a Hebrew Israelite wearing Cadillac seat covers down there yelling talking about the white <laughs> crush velour in the dog of summer hey man let me kick some truth to you brother you hot you too hot for me to stand close to I can't hear your truth you need a longer megaphone talk to me while I'm in my car But all them brothers out there hurt by Christianity. They don't like the results of their lives. You know, don't nobody just starting out unmarried or just, you know, young and they twins. Don't nobody just starting out join that. Those are all dudes that's got three, four, five baby mamas, whole bunch of child support. Yeah. Don't work a job. There's always some disaster in their life. And they feel it's over. So this is the last resort. It has to be the last resort to where all that hot felt. That ha that's it. That has to be the end. <laughs> These burdens. <laughs> so they decide to go on a quest to find Jesus without fellowship or authority. 
that's why God built the church. So that we could stay balanced. So that we could balance each other. So that the preached word can watch over our souls. The Bible said that's my job to watch for your soul. Who's watching for it if the pastor's not watching for it? I'm trying to preach in here. Folks just want to interpret the Bible the way they want to. But God set this up. Then you will try to prove that you don't need people and thus you mess up God's order. God's blessing is in his order and we ought to be respectful of those that we place over our lives. Amen. You place them over your life. If it didn't work out, if they hurt you, whatever, forgive them and move on but don't demonize all leaders because you had a bad one you pick them look at somebody say you pick them you can't get mad at God you pick them you went there you made that choice just like anything else you invest in you can't get mad at anybody you buy bad stock, if you play the stock market, you buy a bad one, you don't counsel all of them because one went bad. Well, depending on how bad it went, you might have to. But the, <laughs> let me use another example. <laughs> but yeah, when you was dating or courting, it didn't work out. You didn't become gay. I know you didn't. I'm speaking it. I'm speaking that you did. Amen. We do pretty good here at ABC. We don't. Our men look like men in here now. That's 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 what we do. We want our young boys to grow up seeing real men. Amen. So you know, but you don't switch teams because you got a bad one. Amen. So you don't do that with preachers. You don't demonize all, all the church. See, this why I don't go to church. That's not why. Amen. Then you'll try to prove that you don't need people and mess up God's word. Hebrews 13 and 17 says, Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves. For they do what? It's the Bible. They, and they must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. Because if they're doing it with grief, it's what? That's messing you up. Your past. This is a real hearing blocker. The way you were raised has a lot to do with the way you hear. If you were abused, then you don't respond well to commands or shouting. If you were abandoned, then you try hard to please others. If you were raised in an emotional church, then you need to feel a certain way to function spiritually. All these things define who you are. When you have not healed from these issues, it's very hard to accept the words from someone that you feel has not been through what you've experienced or they seem too perfect because of the perfect gospel they preach. I try to hug. I try to, hey, how you doing, sister? <laughs> What's wrong? Do you see something on me? <laughs> Flesh? <laughs> A frown? <laughs> no, that's not what I'm, I'm coming to show love to you. Yeah. I'm not coming to judge you. I can't. It's not my job to judge you by looking at eyeballing you. Oh, I just see. Ooh. Where was you last night? <laughs> what? Man. Like Elder Priest last week, Jesus said, I didn't come to do that. No, he said, I came to save people. I didn't come to launch no attack against no human. Tear somebody down and destroy somebody. How would our prophet come in and spilling your business all over the place? Why would I do that when I want to come and help you? Yeah. Oh, now wait a minute. You the G. Craig Lewis from the hip hop. 
you be exposed as I don't have to. I don't expose nothing. I take what they already put out and I show it and I hold it up with the word. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Ain't that what? I don't know what they doing when the lights are turned out and that ain't for me to preach. I'm preaching what they did in the light. I'm bringing that to the light. God will bring the darkness to the light. All right, let me, amen. I've been doing it for years. Amen. But the way you were raised has a lot to do with the way you hear all of those things. All these things define who you are. When you have not healed from these things, it's very hard to accept the words from someone that you feel has not been through what you experienced. Or they seem too perfect because of the gospel they preach. You may feel your situation is different or that people just don't understand you. But the bottom line is, if you don't hear, you will never change. Yeah, ain't nobody perfect. Nobody. And because I'm preaching a perfect word don't mean I think I'm better than you. It just means that the word is perfect and we all need to live up to it. Philippians 3 and 13, brother, and I count not myself to have apprehended. Paul is saying, I'm, I, I'm still not finished. I'm still not there. You would think, Paul, well, God called him to write the Bible. Yeah, God called him perfect men to write the word. Why did he use imperfect men? Because all men are imperfect. Amen. There are none righteous, none. Brother, and I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, I forget those things that are behind me. I know enough to know that I got to forget those things that are behind and reach forth unto those things which are before. That changes your posture. I mean, that changes your thought thinking of your past so that you can go forward. You can hear when you're thinking in terms of forward progress. Amen. I'm not going to a church based on my past. See, look at that. No, I'm going based on the word. Here in eight. These are aids. These will help you here. Patience. Look at somebody and say, I need more patience. This will help you. Ooh, if you slow it down, this will help you. People are angry at me to this day because I move so slow. Do I move slow, Jay Bryant? I move slow, Elder. I move slow. I move slow. I've been talking about this building next door, the 6,000 square feet we just got for our uh, recreation and all that. We just signed the lease this past week because we move slow. The landlord moves slow too, but, <laughs> but we move slow, man. We got to make sure we are ready. We do have it though. Praise God. We signed the lease on it. I guess they'll be busting the floor up pretty soon and we'll get, get, to, get to working on that. But that building was over there the entire time we've been here and nobody knew it. Everybody thought it was attached to the gymnastics. But you know what? God was saving it for us. He knew we couldn't afford it. He knew we couldn't afford it when we first got here. And he, 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 he just didn't even want the thought of it in my mind. And when we were ready to get it, it was there waiting for us. Yes. Amen. We filled this building up first. People are all around, they all around that corner now. But now we'll finally be able to knock this out, have an open sanctuary, and then have facilities for our homeschool co-op and all our fellowships and all of that. So look at somebody say, God is good. God is good. Amen. Patience. Being slow to speak or act on a situation can help you in the long run. If you exercise patience, you can hear things more clearly. It's almost impossible to hear correctly while you are speaking. Hush and listen and take your time. Look at somebody say, take your time. Take your time. Take your time. I love her. She looked good. 
Take your time, brother. Amen. Amen. Can we give it a couple of months for you marry her? Amen. Look at somebody. What well, the Bible said, you better marry than to burn. Better to marry than to burn, brother. You better wait. Take care of what's burning. You was burning before you met her. So you can't use that scripture and you was already on fire. Better to marry than to burn. Brother, you burning for anything. You just hot. <laughs> it's, but it's impossible to hear correctly while you are speaking. Another thing that I age you hearing, <laughs> placement. When you plant yourself in the right place, you put yourself in an environment that is conducive to hearing. How many of y'all feel like ABC the right place for you? You can hear and hear. You be mad at me, I know, I know. I come and hug you, know the message just, you just chop suey. You just, I mean, you are chopped greens. I come hug you, <laughs> no. It'll be all right next week. Hey, pastor. Yeah, that's okay. It's stung. Messages sting. Truth stings. I don't want to be nowhere where the truth is not. I don't want to hear no pastor trying to make me feel good and get paid. I don't want to hear that. I don't need no inspirational message. Brother, the devil trying to kill us all. I need some truth. Lying in your pockets and taking money from Gates. I don't want to hear that. The wrong place usually has the wrong voices. You, that's what makes it the wrong place. You will hear the wrong thing if you are not in the right place. You can hear wrong so long until wrong sound right. Then when right come and try to talk to you... <laughs> The Bible said, well, but my pastor say, but the Bible said, you can't hear it. You've heard wrong so long, you think wrong is right. Perseverance. There will be times when our hearing is impaired, when the cares of this life try to muffle our spiritual ears. We must endure and keep pressing to hear. There's going to be times when you go spiritually deaf. Amen. Amen. Time when you're talking to your wife and she can't hear. You're like, babe, just. She can't hear. Then you got to go in your prayer closet and say, God, thump her head. <laughs> thump her head. Wake up, Lord. Wake you. Like, like you threatening. Like, God, you better wake her up. God better wake her up. What? <laughs> No, no, because you know what he going to do? He going to show you what you doing that got her like that. That's why I don't go to him. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mess with God like that. If my wife is acting like that, search me, Lord. What, what I do, what I say, it has to be my fault. It just has to be. I just want peace. So if it's my fault, show me, Lord. I make it right. I go to her and play with her, and she hate that. When she want to be mad, and I start playing. She just take off running and run all over the house. I gotta chase it. And we, you know, we both getting old, so it's that old slow. Girl, come here, come here. You better come here. You better come here. Just make it right, man. Just make it right. Make it better. Yeah. When the cares of this life try to muffle our spiritual ears, we must endure and keep pressing. Even when it makes us uncomfortable or hurts our feelings, we must hear. When this message is making you uncomfortable, can you make it to altar call? Can you make it to the finish line? It's making you uncomfortable. There's a reason you're uncomfortable. Because there's a devil poking at you. Trying to tell you, nope, leave. He's lying. Don't listen. Nope, don't listen to that. When I did the rewind, I think in Virginia. We were in Virginia. No, Carolina. Raleigh. 
and I was doing the rewind and there was a guy, he came up and he was possessed. A demon came on him and a demon was yelling out, don't listen to G. Craig. He don't know what he's talking about. So he was having a conversation with the demon. He said, no, that's what I came here for. The devil said, turn around and get out of here. He don't know what he's talking about. And I'm sitting there listening. I'm like, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I was happy to hear the devil. You know, I, that's the kind of stuff I want to hear Satan say. That, I, that blessed me. Devil, you blessed me with that. It did. When he said it, it blessed me. Because I want to hear you hate me. Yeah, I don't need you. I don't need you telling folk me and you good. <laughs> Had that happen too. Yeah, the 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 manager, uh, Jamie Foxx's manager, back in the day, Reno. Uh, he w took Houston. You remember the remember the rapper singer that gouged his own eye out. His mom was Belizean. and his mom told him he had to get the demons out of him. So he got a fork in his hotel room and gouged his own eye out. So he was possessed by demons. So Reno, he was managing him, Jamie Foxx, The Rock, all them guys back then. He didn't know what to do. So he's calling around. So he called this prominent, famous, prominent preacher. He might repent, so I ain't going to say his name. But he called him and took the boy to him. And he took the boy to him. He said, man. I just need somebody to cast this demon out. And the boy was laughing. He said he laughed. Houston laughed the whole ride there. Then when he got there, he was in the office with his legs crossed laughing. And so Reno said, he told him, he said, hey, man, you got to respect the man of God. He said, he's one of us. He's working for us. Ask him. And so he ultimately came it met me in Sacramento, you know, and we, we dealt with all of that. But yeah, they, 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 I mean, I want the devil to say that. Amen. Amen. We ain't on the same team. I'm against you. I preach against you. I stand against you. I'm against the devil. I'm with Jesus. Amen. Yeah. There is no knowing without hearing. If you don't hear, you don't know. And without knowing, there is no faith. I ain't have faith in what you don't want to know. You don't want to know it, you can't have faith in it. Yeah, you gotta want to know it and believe it to have faith. So there's no knowing without hearing and without knowing there's no faith and without faith pleasing God. It's impossible. That's the Bible. Summary! Many of us have questions and the answers are right before us. Many of us have issues that we are dealing with, but the solution has been preached to us every Sunday. Many of us hear the word, but we still choose our own way, even though our way has been in our way for a long time just doesn't make any godly sense to sit under the word, hear the word, and yet do our own thing, but then cry about the results. If God led you to a place to be fed, why not eat? I'm going to say that again. If God led you to ABC to be fed, why not eat? Food is here. Amen. Or, why eat the dessert before eating the valuable nutrients of the main course? Don't be coming for the band. We know the band is good. Don't come for the band. Don't come for the, your favorite song. I know you ain't coming for the air condition, so don't let me... <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, don't come to high-five your homeboys and homegirls. You want all the desserts, the benefits, but you don't want the nutrients, the meal. ABC is not a supplement. Amen. 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 It's the full entree. If you choose the word that is be, if you trust the word that is being preached, then you should put it into what action. Otherwise, things will not change 
and you will not grow. Revelations 3 and 20, behold, I stand at the door and what? Knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I'll come into him, sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am sat down with my father in his throne. He that hath a what? Ear. Ear. Let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Amen? Amen. Everyone stand to your feet. Help my ears open, Lord, so I can hear. I don't want to feel some kind of way about what's being said. I want, if it's applicable to me, I want to apply it. I don't need an obstacle course for the word to have to go through before it penetrates. I need the word to fall on hearing ears so that it can bless me. If that's you and you need that, come on up. Father God, help me that my ears be not blocked, that I can hear, that I can receive. When the message is about me, I want it to get me. When the truth has come for me, I want it to get me. I want it to reach me. I don't want to be picturing other people that I think he's talking about. I don't want to be seeing people that I don't like in the church and saying, "Uh uh-huh, that's right. Mm, He's talking to her. I know that he's talking to her. No. I need to apply it to me. I want God to speak to me through the man of God, through the sermon, through the message, through the truth. Man, when truth comes for you, the truth came for you. That means that it cares for you. Paul said, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? I got to live by it too. I have to deny flesh too. I got to take my cross up. I have to do what you do. We all got to do it. So yeah, it's difficult to hear sometimes. Yeah, it's hardcore. Yes, it flies right against what society's doing because society is the world. And all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. But it's what God desires. So we can stop creating issues and then bringing them to God to fix. Anyone else? Open my ears, Lord. Open my ears, Lord everyone just bow your heads father god i just thank you lord father god thank you for this message thank you for this truth thank you lord for coming against something that is just prevalent in all the churches it seems like people getting used to the word used to the pastor used to the truth used to and then they get comfortable just scrolling through various preachers and various voices and just then you'll start then they start just listening to the ones that agree with them then we get to a place where we don't make any more changes but father you change us into what you want us to be and that takes time Paul even said I'm not saying I'm I'm all the way there none of us are So, Father, I pray right now that you would open our ears so we can hear the truth that you're sharing with us every Sunday. Open our ears that we can hear, Father God, and receive and apply the truth that is being preached. When it's for me, Lord, let me hear it for me. Let me apply it to me. Father God, get my mind off everyone else. And let me receive what is for me. Come on and lift your hands up. Father God, help me hear what is for me. What you speak for me. What you speak for me. Hallelujah. 
Come on, just pray that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He that has an ear, let him hear. What the Spirit of God is saying. The Spirit of God is speaking. Spirit of God is saying, Spirit of God is speaking, He's saying, Repent, come back to your first love. He's saying, Draw near, and I will draw near to you. He's saying, saying seek my face and I will be found by you he's calling you hallelujah he's calling you he's calling you harden not your He's calling you. He's calling you. Surrender, he's calling you. Heart and not your heart. Hallelujah. Father, that our ears will be open. We give you full access to it. Whatever needs to be moved out of the way, move it, Lord. Whatever needs to be shifted, shift it, Lord. Whatever needs to be changed, change it, Lord. And whatever we need to change, we'll change it. Father God, help us to be perfectly aligned with what your will is for us in this hour. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and just hug somebody and say, open your ears. God is speaking. God is speaking. On your way to your seats. Come on, hug somebody. God is speaking. Open 